Hello, hello, this is Joe from Nerd in Korea. We are continuing our Budget Mario series and we're on to the black uh, card draw artifacts now. So when I say budget, I mean $2 or less and I'm using the TCG market value. Not a sponsor, not one bit. Black card draw, okay, so black is better at card draw than some colors at least. It still usually has some added expense, like you have to pay life, you have to sacrifice a creature, something like that usually that is included with it. So yeah, these are artifacts that you can put in various decks that I think would be very beneficial. Honorable mentions, so these are all 11 cents and under. Uh, so Mephic Draught, again, I think this is 7 cents. When it, it enters the battlefield or is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you draw a card and you lose one life. So for one in a black, you immediately get to draw a card and you lose one life. And then you need some way to like probably sacrifice it. So this is great in a deck where you can sacrifice and recur it over and over again. Um, and yeah, you're going to keep doing that and basically every time you sacrifice it, you get the benefit of whatever, you know, spell you're sacrificing it with or effect you're sacrificing it with. And then you're going to draw a card and lose one life. Uh, pretty good deal. Again, very niche though. So yeah. Heirloom Mirror. So for one, you can pay one life, discard a card, draw a card, mill a card, and then put a ritual counter on it. Okay, so that's overly complicated, but there are a lot of decks that can like get value out of discard and value out of mill. So yeah, if you've got some kind of deck that can really take advantage of that, this is a good card to have. Um, yeah, then if it has three or more counters on it, remove and transform it, activate only as a sorcery. Okay, Inherited Fiend is what it transforms into. And so it is a flying 4-4, four, four. and for two and a black, you can exile target creature card from uh, from a graveyard, a graveyard, an opponent's probably, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. So this is kind of expensive as well, but the effect is very useful against some decks. Like if you're worried about them, you know, bouncing that really pain in the butt creature over and over again, exile it and just not worry about that. And Beg of Devouring. I think this is the one that actually costs 11 cents. Uh, whenever you sacrifice another non-token artifact or creature, exile it. So this is great. If you've got a deck where you're sacrificing things, this is a great card to have. And for two and tap, you can sacrifice another artifact or creature, draw a card. So it lets you sacrifice things whenever you want. For hitting death triggers and things like that, that can be extremely useful. Having a, something that lets you sacrifice things, it's an ability so you can use it on other people's turns as well. And that's where I think a lot of that, that kind of usefulness comes in. And for three and tap, sacrifice Bag of Devouring, roll a d10, return up to X cards from among cards exiled with the Bag of Devouring to their owner's hands where X is the result. So you're rolling a 10 sided dice and, or 10 sided die and uh, yeah. Whatever number you get, you can return that many cards from exile straight to the battlefield. That's actually extremely, uh, oh sorry, not to the battlefield, to the owner's hand. I'm misremembering, as usual. But yeah, still, that's a very good effect, right? If you've got a deck where you're sacrificing things all the time, you might as well have a chance of getting them back to your hand. Even the rolling a d10 part, I think is what puts most people off. People don't like rolling in this game because it's not a dice game, which is reasonable, but anyway. Immortal Coil. So this is two black black, and you can for, tap it to remove two cards from your graveyard from the game, draw a card. All right, so this the added expense here is like you have to keep exiling things from your own graveyard. Um, I think this is better in Mardu than in like Mono Black. I'd probably have more recursion. I wouldn't necessarily want to do that. If you got a deck where you're like, yeah, I'm once they're in the graveyard, I'm probably not going to be using them a lot. You should find some way to get value there. And that's what this is good for. So yeah, if damage would be dealt to you, prevent that damage, remove a card from your graveyard. And then if you have no cards left in your graveyard, you lose the game. So here's the very big downside to this, is that it kind of changes your win con. 
which I think you could use to your advantage if it's like mid mid to late game and you've got a pretty good sized graveyard. Play this and then, yeah, even if your life is very low, it doesn't matter anymore. Especially if you can like turn this off. If you can somehow sacrifice it or exile it, then you can like kind of just have a create a little buffer zone for yourself. So yeah, this could be very, very good in the right situation. Anyway, 50 cents. Oh yeah, sorry, one last thing. Um, yeah, I would want to use this with an alternate win con, like using, uh, you know, using all the cards in your deck, like, and then you win the game. This would be very good at that because you want to keep throwing things into your own graveyard to do that. And then this is just like, they can't combat damage you and out in the meantime. Packed weapon, all right. So this is three and a black. As long as you have pack, a packed weapon is attached to a creature, you don't lose the game for having zero or less life. So once again, it's removing a win or a loss condition, I guess. Whenever a quick creature attacks, draw a card, reveal it. That creature gets plus X plus X until end of turn and you lose X life or X is that card's mana value. I would want to use this with, with a creature with lifelink, right? It's not really a big deal if you like lose life and then immediately gain it back by getting that combat damage in and then uh, healing up basically. So yeah, this could very easily be useful and I think the not losing when you have zero less life, that could come in handy too. Anyway, 28 cents. Barb Servitor. Okay, so first of all, indestructible and damage reflection, right? Whenever it is dealt damage, it target opponent loses that much life. So this is a combat a dam or a damage reflection unit. Uh, I love this. I think this is something I got to order a few of, but anyway. And when it enters the battlefield, suspect it. It has menace and can't block. And whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you draw a card and lose one life. Again, it gives itself menace. It can't block, so there's a downside, but it, it, yeah, it gives itself menace. And if you have any effects that you can use to like do damage to your own creatures, you can just bounce that damage at anyone else. So yeah, that can be very, very good. Or even force it to fight other things, right? If you've got cards that fight, just choose the biggest creature on the battlefield and then make it fight that creature. It's indestructible, so it'll be okay, and then you just automatically do damage to whoever you want. Anyway, 19 cents. Oh, what is your favorite black budget artifact? Okay, and uh, Altar of the Wretched. Okay, so when it enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice non -token, uh, uh, sorry, a non-token creature. If you do, draw X cards, the mill X cards, where X is that creature's power. This is something that is very abusable, right? You can even just throw a bunch of equipment or something on a creature and then sacrifice it and then just draw a whole bunch of cards. You do have to lose life, but one life for one card is definitely worth it. And then, yeah. For two and a black, you can return it from your graveyard to the, your hand. Uh, it does transform, and it transforms into Wretched Bone Mass. So yeah, that oh, sorry with uh, with that it has a uh, craft with creature, I believe. So you can exile a creature from your battlefield or your graveyard even. So that's getting your graveyard value, and this actually has yeah, Wretched Bone Mass has flying as long as an exiled creature. Uh, as long as an exiled card used to craft it has flying. The same is true for first strike, double strike, death touch, haste, hexproof, indestructible, lifelink, menace, protection, reach, trample, and vigilance. So you can just like use whatever creatures that are already in your graveyard. You can exile them when you're crafting this and you can just give it like all the abilities. This can be such a scary, scary thing. Anyway, yeah, and its power and toughness are each equal to the total power of XL cards used to craft it. Very easy to make this very big, and even you should try to like give it indestructible. 
that's the really big one there for me. Anyway, 43 cents. Mask of Gristle Brand. Okay. Equip creature has flying and lifelink. Okay, this is just a very useful thing to have in a lot of decks. Having a way to give flying just can deal with so many defense issues. Lifelink is always great too, of course. Uh, whenever a creature, equip creature dies, you may pay X life or X is his power and you draw X cards. So you can just keep like throwing creatures that you're giving lifelink and flying. You just keep throwing them at people, and if they do block and they kill it, well then you just get to draw a bunch of cards for a fairly minimal life loss. Uh, really, I like this because it is like one of those cards where it's like, do I actually want to block the creature? Because if I block it and kill it, then uh, he's just going to draw, or you know, the other player is just going to draw a bunch of cards. So uh, what what should I do? It, make, it makes the choices much harder here, is what I mean. Anyway, 49 cents. The list. Immortal Coil is 50 cents. Packed Weapon is 28 cents. Barb Servitor is 19 cents. Altar of the Wretched is 43 cents, and Mask of Grizzlebrand is 49 cents. Alright, take it easy.